You're listening to Mortgage Lending Mastery. Get the knowledge you need to advance your mortgage practice quickly and efficiently from Jen Duplessis, America's Mortgage Mastery Mentor with over 37 years of experience and over $1 billion in lifetime funding. Jen has been mentoring loan officers and realtors for over 15 years and speaking on stages across the globe. So settle in and get ready as Jen and her guests share their experience passion and strategies to help you crack the top producer code to reach new heights in your business. And now here's your host, Jen Duplessis, mortgage mastery mentor and head chicken charge of Kinetic Spark Consulting. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to this episode. I am so delighted to have our guest with us today, Andrew KD. He was known as the Epic Mortgage Guy. Welcome to the show, Andrew. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to have you here. Um, okay, so let me tell everybody a little bit about you. You're a Florida native. Um, you've been, you know, in, in the Southeast forever and ever and ever, right? Um, you joined yes. uh, in early 2015. Andrew found his passion in the mortgage business quickly. I want to find out what you did before mortgage business quickly becoming one of the top single producers in the state. Um, I love this mantra. I aim to make the closing room more of a celebration than a sigh of relief. Boy, don't we know all that, right? Yes. Um, and with over 1,000 five-star reviews, which we're going to talk about here today, um, it speaks volumes about his quality of service, his experience for his clients, passion and communication. And one of your niches, or maybe your only niche, we'll talk about the niches as well. Um, one of your niches is serving um, those who serve us, which I which I absolutely love. That was one of my niches as well when I was in um, the lending business too. So welcome to the show. Excited to have you. Thank you. Yeah. It's excited, exciting to, to be here. So let's let's get started with a, a couple of things. One, I want to find out what did you do before 2015 that brought you into the mortgage business? Because as you know, and and those that are listening know as well, no one goes to school for mortgages. No, no, no there's no four year old kids out there saying, "Daddy, when I grow up, I want to be a mortgage banker." Right. Uh, <laughs> No. So, you know, fun story, um, kind of a crazy story. Uh, so I'm actually a high school dropout. Um, I dropped out of high school in ninth grade and oh, wow. yeah. joined my family business, uh, which is school photography um, and worked in the family business until I was 30 years old and working with family, living close to family, traveling with family, family vacations, family. I love family, but I <laughs> needed to kind of go off and start something on my own. And uh, we had a big office building and it was a small mortgage shop that was subleasing from us. And so I would go into work at like three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, and I'd work my tail end off in this photography company. And one day the, uh, the branch manager of this, of this mortgage shop came back into this production room and he was like, why the heck are you still doing this? He said, if you join the mortgage industry, I'm gonna change your life. And so we started this conversation at the end of 2014, I separated from the family business, still retain ownership of it, uh, but separated from my day job, <clears throat> had to go get my GED to get a mortgage license. So I'm 31 years old, going to get a GED. It was all sorts of fun. Oh my and um, yeah. Yeah. And so by February of 15, I was licensed. April, 2015, I closed my first deal. And by June, I had done my first million dollar month. Oh, that's awesome. And so I just, I just kind of went at it, you know, really hot and heavy and and grounded. So my business, you know, my background is really business building, uh, which, you know, I think is what separated me a little bit from the pack in the mortgage industry. This isn't just I'm closing loans. No, I'm building a business. I'm building a company within a company is how I feel about it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would agree with you as well. I think that we have to look at ourselves as entrepreneurs. We're mortgage entrepreneurs and you know, those that aren't looking at that, you know, are going to have a rude awakening at the end of the career, right? <laughs> the end of the career. Yeah, because and building it is to have something, you know, to go to after you're, after you've decided to leave. Go ahead. Yeah. And I mean, for me, it's, you know, it's, it's all about building it and structuring it correct because there's great satisfaction about, you know, serving families and creating home ownership. There's amazing satisfaction found in that. But it also will burn you out. You know, in 2020, I closed over 400 units uh, with a production partner and an assistant. Like we just, 
And that'll burn you out over time. So if you don't have a bigger vision of building junior loan officers, building a team, like personally, I don't originate hardly anything anymore. I have a team now that I pass the deals on to and they originate the deals. And now I get the pleasure of creating homeownership, but also creating opportunities for people within a, within my team to grow and see people that come into the industry who've never closed a loan before start closing four, five, six, 10 deals a month. That's a big win for me. Yeah. Well, it totally is. One of my mantras is stop working in and on your, uh, sorry, stop working in and on your business and start working above and beyond your business. And that's exactly what you're doing. And, you know, I can tell you that when I was a lender as well, um, you know, I didn't pull credit for like eight years before I retired. I wouldn't even know how to log into Encompass. I could look at it, but I couldn't do anything in it. I could assess with you. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> and I think that's that's part of it. And, and I think some people say, and you're proud of that. And I go, yeah, I am proud of that because, you know, I moved beyond that and I was working in my my genius zone. And that's, of course, what you're working in now. So how did you know when you had arrived in, in your practice? Um, and that may not have been at COVID in numbers. That may have been at some other trigger. So how did you know when you arrived? Man, that's a good question. I would I would say almost immediately because I found passion in it. Uh, it, it went way beyond just the job for me. It, it was, it's, you know, coming from a, call it a corporate side of the business, even though I was business owner, coming to, you know, straight commission, you kill what you eat, you know, yeah. going out there and actually taking something from zero. And then, you know, a year later seeing, I think my first year I closed 78 transactions in my first year and to actually see such substantial growth for me, it was almost immediate. Uh, I found such a passion in, in the grind and getting out there and hustling and creating relationships and creating partnerships. I would say within the first 120 days into the industry, I was like, this is home. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Well, that's good. And you've never looked back since. So that's, that's awesome. So let's talk about your niches for a moment, because I, uh, you know, I, you know, if you're listening to this, you're saying, you know, I don't like niches. Sometimes people don't, I find more people don't like niches than those who do. And we all know the cliches and the phrases about, you know, about having niches. So tell us a little bit about, about that, what yours are, why they are yours and what you feel um, has benefited you by having a niche, having something that that people know you for. You're the expert for it. Yeah. So people, you know, kind of call me the VA guru. That's always that's a name that stuck early on. You know, if I I I am not one that would consider myself to have a bunch of niches. Like for me, it's it's VA loans, it's veterans. Um, we do everything. Obviously, you know, conventional loans, FH, whatever you need, we're going to do. But for me. I think where that, that niche fell into place for me was this would have been 2016. I was helping my dad buy a home. Um, he was buying a home in Atlanta and we're going through this process. And I just asked him, I was like, didn't, didn't you serve? Like, why are, why aren't we looking at a VA loan? And he was like, Oh, I don't, I don't think I served long enough. Uh, you know, I was, I was drafted, but never actually saw combat. And, and I was like, well, let me just sign in and pull your certificate of eligibility. Let's see. And so 30 seconds later, I had a certificate of eligibility for my father. Mm -hmm. And those were the days in 2016 when VA interest rates were 2% lower than conventional, like right. substantially lower than conventional. And so my father went from coming in with 10% down payment, mm -hmm. you know, really pushing the envelope to get to that, all these closing costs. Mm -hmm to going into a VA deal at a lower payment with no down payment. Mm -hmm. And for me, just seeing that enlightenment on his face, like, oh my gosh, I never knew I had this. It, it really spurred this in me to like, really go after the veteran business. And not in the sense, like for me, I, I hate it when I hear people say, oh yeah, I target veterans. I'm like, that's <laughs> not something you should say. Like, right. <laughs> don't, please. Right. Yeah. But yeah. when you can actually see it and come at it from a level of passion, like that firsthand experience with my own father led me to ask the question of every single borrower that I speak with thousands and thousands and thousands of borrowers. One of my opening questions is, have you ever served? 
Yeah. And the Armed Forces National Guard, have you ever been a part of it? And it's so shocking how many people have and are eligible, but have no idea that they even have eligibility out there. It's something, oh yeah, that was 35 years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Let me check. Because hands down, bar none, the VA loan is the best product out there. There's nothing like it. Now, I would like to say if the VA, if the Veterans Administration is watching, lower your dang f VA funding fee because it's ridiculous. It's not necessary to be where it's at for the lowest default rate of any home loan. Yeah. We'll get off that soapbox now, though. Yeah, yeah. And and don't be so picky about your appraisals sometimes, right? There's, there's sometimes... <laughs> Um, but I know why we're doing it. We're protecting our protecting those who served. Um, so both my father right. and my father-in-law served. So we, you know, that's why that was a niche for me. Um, okay. So you've talked about, you know, what it is, why it is, how, how has that served you? Uh, you know, Grant Cardone says best known is better than best. And there's a lot of technicians as loan officers who, uh, you know, are saying, gosh, if they just knew who I was, <laughs> right, they'd know that that I'm really good at what I'm doing. Well, that's the whole point. They need to know who you are. How has this yes. helped your practice? Um, you said, you know, you're known as the VA guru, but how, how has that helped your practice in um, helping you achieve your goals? Because I know that, you know, a lion's share of your business is coming through VA, but to get over that that hump to get to the 400, to get to whatever number you're trying to reach, you know, in any given year, you have to have some of the other loans too. And they're part of that. So is yeah, it a lead in for you? Yeah. Is it a lead in for you? You know, have you marketed all of it uh, that way? I just am curious because I know what I, you know, what I coach my clients on, um, but I, I'm curious, I just want to validate it. So I'm just going to let you answer it because I'm sure I know the answer. Yes. And sorry, I have a dog that just stepped right between my legs here. So I've, yeah. I've got my puppy just standing here oh, with me. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I mean, if anybody knows me and follows me, I'm super, super visible on social media. Um, social media has been the win uh, for me. I've got about 8,000 followers on Facebook, which isn't a ton. But with that, I get about 200,000 impressions a month. Yeah. Uh, so my Facebook engagement is extremely high. And for me, I, I would go all the way back to my first six months in the industry. Uh, Justin Fitzhugh was the guy that brought me into the business. I'll name drop him because he was an amazing mentor. And it was about, I was maybe like four months in or maybe three months in. Yeah, it was probably May, March or April or May, right after I got licensed. And I was in the office every day, you know, dressed up in a suit, ready to conquer the world. And I hear this booming voice from his office and he hollers at me and he says, get in my office. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> I walk in there and he's like, what are you doing here? And I said, uh, I, I work here. And he's like, <laughs> right. he's like, what, what, what are you doing here? And I was like, you, you hired me. He said, no, you're missing the point. He said, why are you in an office? And he said, in fact, he said, if I see you in this office again, before you have your first million dollar month, I'm going to fire you. Mm -hmm. Get out there and be visible. He said, you're coming in every day waiting for your phone to ring yeah. rather than getting out there and being in yeah. front of people and being visible in front of people. And I did that. I, I started going to open houses. I went to like 700 open houses in six months. I went to every real estate brokerage office within a hundred mile radius of my home. I just literally went out and mm -hmm. lo and behold, two months later, I've got a million dollar month. And then it just started to steamroll from there and kind of, you know, Cult, kind of hit the peak in, I think, March of 2020 with like 17 million closed in a month. And I don't want to go back to those days. I don't want to go back to that being all on my head. But now that I've got a team built out, I would say for anyone joining the industry, if you're not getting what you, you want out of the business right now, now is the time to get out there and get visible. I don't care if you sit at a coffee shop with your best real estate partner. There's, I see it all the time at a local coffee shop here. It's one of my competitors. And I'm, I'm only mad about it because I didn't think of the idea first. But two, two, three times a week, they'll sit for two hours at a coffee shop with a sign in front of their table that says, so-and-so from Keller Williams, so-and-so from this lender, stop by, say hi, and coffee's on us. Yeah, yeah. But and they sit right at the first table in the coffee lot, shop. Hey. Yeah, that's called I love you a latte. <laughs> I mean, I mean, just get out and get visible. Yeah. Start start doing things. Go to three, four networking events a month. Sure. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be out in the evening times. I get it. We have lives. But if you're willing to put the grind in and really put the hustle in for two, three, four years, 
the beautiful thing about this business is it's such a snowball. Yeah. Like real estate agents, if they do 50 transactions this year, January 1st of next year, they've got to go sell to get 50 more. Mm -hmm. As a mortgage lender, if I get 50 referrals closed this year and I do a good job, January 1st of next year, I'm going to have 50 more referrals coming in. Yeah. And so all you have to do is build the base, grind for three, four years, build a base, and that base will self-sustain as long as you do good work. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. Amen. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Sorry, so I got preachy there. Yeah, no, it's okay. No, and you're preaching to the choir. I love it. And I know that the people that are watching or listening to our podcast are, are they've heard it from me for nine years. <laughs> from nine years. So I get it. I totally get it. So let's talk. I want to shift a little bit about um the closings. You said about the closings, you know, to make that a celebration versus a sigh of relief. Um, for those who do attend closings, and I hope all of you do, <laughs> oh, you are closing. That's a point of sale. And I don't think people understand it. That's a true point of sale. Um, and you need to be there, right? Uh, so tell us a little bit about what we're you're doing at closing to make it a celebration. Is it because you're doing something specifically at closing or because you're moving the loan beyond, you know, the um the closing line, so to speak, but the finish line? And uh, you know, now you're talking about uh you know, the service level that makes the closing not a sigh of relief, but a celebration. So tell us what, what you mean specifically. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. What I mean by that is I, I've seen it so many times. Real estate agents post, you know, hey, you know, congratulations to my buyers closing on this. It was a rough ride, but we did it. Uh. <laughs> and I'm like, this is an experience that a client, that a home buyer goes through every five to seven years. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is a, this is a monumental moment. They say, you know, some of the most impactful moments of your life is a birth, a death, a marriage, a divorce, purchasing of a first home is included in that. Some of the most memorable things of your life. Mm -hmm. And you're dead right about the going to closings. I went to every single closing until I got to the point where I had 30 closings a month and simply couldn't attend them. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the first impression in our industry that matters. It's the last impression that matters. Yeah. Do yeah. you think that client is going to remember their initial phone call with you? Or do they think they're going to remember you giving them a hug at the closing table? Yeah. It's not the first impression that matters. It's the last impression that matters. And for me, I just, it's not about bringing a gift to closing. It's not about doing party poppers at closing. That's not the celebration I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is getting the wire to closing three days ahead of time sending an email the night before closing, kind of a quirky little email that says, "'Twas the night before closing, all things are set, the package is at, is at title, here's the Fed reference number." Going above and beyond, so the clients walk into that closing room and they feel so reassured. How many clients in our industry walk into a closing room and it's been such a crap show that yeah. they don't even know how long closing is going to take or if it's actually going to close. They're, yeah. they're walking in on pins and needles. Yeah. And they're but if I can give a client that. an experience. Yeah. Exactly. If I can give a client an experience where they walk in and they're completely at peace knowing everything's done, that allows them to come off the pins and needles and truly celebrate with us at closing that they're a homeowner. And for me, that's the why. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I used to tell my clients, I, you know, how are you feeling? And, and so many words, but how are you feeling about this process? You know, we're nervous, we're nervous. And I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm so excited for you. I will be excited for you. And then you let me know the day that we can transfer that excitement to you and you get excited, right? During the process. Exactly. And it was always exciting to hear that because we always ask the question is, are you excited yet? Are you excited yet? And they go, oh yeah, now I'm excited. Okay, good. So now you can be excited for yourself. I love that. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's important. Um, you know, uh, it's so I know that you're still attending closings uh, maybe not you, but a representative is attending a closing, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's very important for, you know, if you're listening to this and you're saying, you know, yeah, but I, you know, he doesn't, now he probably doesn't attend closings because he's got 30 closings. Well, we used to close 50 to 82 loans a month and I couldn't make him to all of them, but I made him to every, every time I could, I did personally. Agreed. But, um, but yeah, you have to have a representative coming. So I just want to make sure people know, you know, as you're getting, you're crossing over that threshold where you're saying, I don't know if I can attend closings. That is the one thing that you don't stop doing. Somehow, some way, somebody goes and represents the company. 
um, or you, right? You. Yeah, because when you walk into that closing room, how many times you you've heard it? I, I guarantee it a dozen times, ten dozen times. How many times you walk in the room as the lender and the title agent will speak up or the title attorney and they're like, oh my, you're lender king. No it. lenders ever come to closing. <laughs> right. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, after 40 years, I'm, I'm coming up on 40 years in a couple of weeks. After 40 years, it's amazing that I still hear that. It's just amazing. It, it is. Yeah. It, it, it's shocking because what if, you know, what if a, everyone who sold the car had the opportunity on that car transaction to create a new referral partner that would send them additional car sales. Yeah. That's what we have in mortgages. We have something called a listing agent. And whether you want to believe it or not, listing agents actually work with buyers as well. Shocking, I know. <laughs> and so we have the opportunity to work with a buyer's agent, but have this little bonus of wowing and just knocking the socks off of a listing agent and creating an entire new relationship simply because we're present, we're there, we're communicative, we're educating people and we show up. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Okay. So let me, let me move on. And I, you know, this is why you're successful. I mean, in that, and that's what people need to hear and, and understand. So let's talk about your five-star reviews. You know, there's a lot, um, Ah, oh, there's, there's a lot of things that I have to say about this, but I won't say it on the podcast. <laughs> okay. A lot of things that I have to say about it, but I think that, um, you know, a, a, there's some reasons behind, I actually do a whole class on this on testimonials and, and five-star reviews. Uh, you know, I think that a lot of people don't ask because they don't want to know. They don't ask because they don't want, they uh, feel like they're being pushy or that, you know, hey, it's all about me. And so as a result, there are so many people that don't have five-star reviews or testimonials, whatever it is you're, you know, going after. Um, so tell us why this is important to you. You said, you know, in your bio, you said, I have over a thousand five-star reviews. So why is that really, really important? Help Help those that are listening here to understand the importance behind it. And then I'd like to explore how you're getting them because there are yes, people yes. that don't want to get them for fear of, right? <laughs> so help them get for over that of. hump, right? They don't really want to hear what's going on, right? But help them get over that hump. So tell us a little bit about why that's so important and then and then how you approach that. Yeah, so the thousand and five star reviews, probably 500 of those are personally for me. The other 500 are my, are my loan officers. That, that's team number on that. But mm -hmm. what I would say is, for me, you can't fix what you don't know is broken. Mm -hmm. And so if you're afraid of getting that three-star review, that's a problem to me. Like you need to be able to be very direct and honest with yourself and your business as to why you might be getting a three-star review. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I, I've always pushed the reviews. I pushed them extremely hard. Um, I set up competitions or sorry, drawings like contests. And so I'll take my entire closed database for a quarter and blast them out an email and say, hey, we closed the transaction with you in the last 90 days. We're going to be doing a $100 um, Home Depot gift card drawing. Each review you leave is an entry. Here's four different websites you can leave them on. Shoot me back a screenshot of, re of your review to be, to be entered. And for me, I want to drive reviews because I also want to get better. If I get a three-star, a one-star review, I've got one one-star review in my career. And I genuinely took it to heart and then realized that the person was absolutely crazy. And I did everything that I would have done a second time over. And I was happy about it. Yeah. She was upset because I wouldn't answer my phone on a 4th of July weekend that I was, or 4th of July, that I was off and with my family Yeah, and went and left me a one-star. And I look back on it and I'm like, should I? No, I'm going to no. choose family over it. No. And so- yeah, for me, like, I, I want to know, I want to know what's out there. And, and like, even as a company, you mortgage, you know, we send out net promoter scores on every single transaction, yeah. not only to the consumer, yeah. but to, to the loan officer to rate the operation staff. Yeah, we yeah. want the loan officers. And, and I believe that's the culture that needs to be created is you can't fix what you don't know is broken. Yeah. And, and, and how are you going to know if it's broken if you're not actually pulling your consumers and figuring out where things need to be updated, changed and tweaked? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's amazing. Um, thank you for sharing all that. I think it's all, all great. Um, I just want to add one thing to this is that, uh, so we did net promoter scores as well. And I, I think the challenge, and of course, at that time I was a regional manager and I said, 
you know, that's fine that we do it after, but we need to do it in the middle. So we had a CXO, a chief experience officer who made calls course so that we could course correct. That's what I was writing down was just course correction so that we made a call right in the middle of the process. And I can't remember exactly where it was. It was probably after the receipt of the appraisal before the approval or something, because we knew when they got the approval, they're going to love us. Right. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we wanted to get it while it was just the tough stuff, you know, getting done. And we did a course correction, you know, and MPS, uh, you know, as well during that time, just saying, are we taking care of you? Uh, you know, are yeah. we responding to you in a in a man a great manner? Do you know what's ne coming up next, so that we could do a course correction to ensure that we got a higher score? You know, and that that's what yeah. we wanted to do because people love hearing that we've taken their suggestions to you know to heed their suggestions and change our process. So I just want to share that and, as well. No, and and that's amazing, and and it's so true. You know, two things I would add on reviews: if you're looking to go get reviews. The two things I would add is number one, begin from the very first conversation with your client yeah. and start using the term five star. Mm -hmm. And so one of our, our, one of our lines in our intro interview, we get a referral in is we aim to provide you a five star experience. When this whole thing's done, we want to earn a five star review from you. So we're prepping them from day one that we want a five star re review. When, when we get conditional approval, one of the lines when we phone call, because we phone call it conditional approval and say, hey, just wanted to reach out, let you know your loan's conditionally approved, no you know, crazy conditions, blah, blah, blah. Hey, on a scale of one to five, that five-star review we talked about, how are we doing? Yeah. We're yeah. doing five. Awesome. You know, we're going to be reaching out for that review. We're going to, and we just keep prepping that. Yeah. And then the other piece I would say is make sure you, at your closing, you ask them for the review, but don't wait until then. When clear to close happens is the time to ask for a review. So remind them at closing, but let them request it as soon as you get the clear to close. And here's why is I found a mass increase in the number of reviews I would get if I asked at clear to close and reminded at closing versus asking at closing and reminding a week later, because the moment closing's done, they're, busy. they're moving, they're busy, they're busy <laughs> right. and you're back burner. And yeah. you're out of mind. They're done with you. So do it in between that clear to close and the closing, and you'll get a lot more engagement on it. Yeah, beautiful. Love that. Love that suggestion. Okay, so next question. Um, and as we kind of end our time here together, give us this, a sense of what you think is going to be happening from your perspective. I'm really big on you know, consuming information that we hear from the news that we hear from, you know, everybody who's out, uh, who's out talking about, including myself, right? I'm talking about what I think the market's going to do, but I'm really big about absorbing that and then re-releasing it with your perspective. So from your perspective, what do you see as what's going to be happening in 2023 and 2024? So you're prepping for next year. And, um, and it's not so much about interest rates, but what do you think that the tactics are going to be? Because principles don't change, but our tactics do. So what do you think is going to be happening in our industry over the next year and a half? I think there's going to be a mass exodus. There needs to be a mass exodus. Mm -hmm. The mortgage industry staffed itself up in 2020 and 2021 uh, to levels of $4.1, $4.2 trillion in business. And we're scaling that back to 1.8, $1.9. They're, we're overstaffed. People are, are, you know, refi shops are now out chasing the real estate agent referral business. Yeah. And so there's a lot more competition and a lot less deals to be had. And so I think there's going to be a mass exodus. I think there's going to be people that, that don't make the cut. And those that don't make the cut are the ones that haven't done the work mm -hmm. and they aren't doing the work right now. They're sitting back pouting and complaining that their phone isn't ringing rather than going out there and educating people. Like I, I started at the beginning of this year, or no, uh, midway through last year, a Facebook group called Epic Housing News. I've got about 700 real estate ag agents in there and I post every single day housing market data. And if you're not out doing things like that and providing value when they don't have business, when they do have business, you'll, you will not be top of mind. Yeah. And so market-wise, I think we're going to see some, some housing shift corrections in select markets. I think a lot of markets are going to remain very strong in housing. Rates will come down. When rates come down, buyers come back. The market will roar back to life on us. When we see interest rates that begin in the fives, 
potentially in the fours over the next year, year and a half, the housing market will come back alive, but it's not coming back to 2021 levels or 2020 levels. It's coming back to 2019 levels. Yeah. And so if you're not out doing the work right now, you're going to be one of those ones that exits the industry. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've seen it. I can't count how many times I've seen it happen over the years. Yeah, I think I think that that's a, a great perspective on that. What are you what are you doing differently this year that you didn't do last year? What have you added to your repertoire this year? My word for the year, I choose a different word every year. Yeah. Uh, so my word for the year is technically two words, but it's double down. <laughs> what I did last year, I'm doubling down, no yeah. matter what it is. If I was doing one Facebook post a day, I'm doing three. Mm -hmm. If I was not posting on LinkedIn, I'm posting every single day. If I wasn't going to networking events, if I was going to one a month, I'm going to two, three, four a month. I'm doubling down, tripling down, quadrupling down on whatever it is. And so I put together a list of high profit activities. Mm -hmm. I call them my HPA list. Mm -hmm. And my goal last year was to end the day every single day at 25 points on that list. And this year I'm ending that at 50 points on the list yeah. every single day. And so for me, it's a year of double down. It's somewhat going to be back to the grind. I wanted to somewhat be beyond this and really just nurture and grow the team. I'm going to continue to nurture and grow the team, but I'm going back into it. I'm, I've got loans in my pipeline. I'm going back to the grind. Yeah. Lead by example. And I think that, yeah, I think that's beautiful. I think it's great that you're, you're doing that. And I want everyone to under, hear that, you know, is doubling down, making that one more. And there's actually a book that's the power of one more, right? It's just one more call, one more event, one more um, follow through, right? And with nurturing your relationship, one more point to touch during the transaction, you know, it's, it's doing one more or double downing. Right. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think that, I think that's great. And I think that's a very, you know, a great thing for you to be doing. I think it's great for everybody to be doing that. Um, I've been talking about not hibernating and hyper-focusing instead, uh, during these winter months and you you're living beautiful Florida so you don't have to worry about that but but for those that are you know I, I love that you said everyone's pouting and I think everyone should be talking about profits you know so stop pouting and start start producing um and that's really where it's at right now because they are people are self-selecting out it is a great time to adopt real estate agents where their lender is gone and Agreed. dump financial I, I, planners where their lender is it's, gone. It's, <laughs> it's almost like low hanging fruit. It is. Like, it, like it's just everywhere right now. Yeah. So many lenders, number one, they're just dropping the ball because they're mentally off their game. Yeah. Like so many people, I, I, if you want to scroll Facebook and just look at how many lenders complain, complain about this, complain about that. You know, at the end of the day, we're all in an industry where we don't have 10,000 hours of schooling to do what we do. We get paid very well to provide an amazing service and if you're not getting the business you need to get, you need to double down. You need to work harder. You need to grind it out for another year, two years and build it back up. It's not that hard. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. So as we finish our time here today, Andrew, thank you so much for all of your insight. I love these tactical, you know, practical things. I, I know that, that anyone who's listening is saying, oh my gosh, I got to take notes on this and replay it again, Re right? Replay it at half speed. Stop playing it at two and a half. Um, I already talk fast enough. <laughs> right. Uh, but it. as we end that, what is, what is a, you know, a book that you're reading or a mantra you have, or a quote that you live by something that is top of mind for you right now, that's driving you today. Uh, 4 a.m. That's 4 what drives me right now. Yeah. Yep. 4 a.m. Yep. Uh, I watched Good this morning. little Kobe Bryant clip. I posted it on my Facebook and he talks about, he talks about his training and why getting up at 4 a.m. allows him to train five times a day when the average basketball player trains two times. And he said, if I do that for five, six years, they could train seven times a day and they'll never catch up to me because I've gained this much on, on my competition. Yeah. And for me, wake up early, organize your day. You're like, I don't have anything to do. Find things to do. Create content. Go on Canva. Spend seven bucks a month. Create content. Do things. You don't have anything to do that's a problem that you created. Go fix it. Yeah. I love it. That's tough love. And I love it. <laughs> I love it. Mints and words. 
I know. I mean, that is exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Well, Andrew, again, I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely beautiful information. Um, you know, I can't wait for you to share this to your your real estate agents and everybody else and let them hear who you really are behind the scenes. And, you know, and I know that it's the same person and, and you know, it's powerful to be on this podcast, you know, just for that very reason to be able to share with people who you truly are. And that's very attractive for, for people. You know, you're not chasing, you're, you're attracting people and that's going to take you really far. So congratulations on your success. I wish you the best this coming up year and years to come in these soaring 20s. <laughs> yes, looking forward to it. That sounds good. Well, everyone, thank you so much again for listening. Thank you for taking time out of your day. I know some of you are working out. Some of you are riding bicycles. Some of you are driving in your cars because you constantly tell me what you're doing while you're listening to podcasts. And it is so beautiful to hear. I love that you're constantly moving forward and improving yourself and your person and reminding you that mindset plus mechanics equals momentum. You have to have all of it. So again, I want to say thank you for listening in. Andrew, thank you so much for coming. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and take a quick moment to scroll down and give us a great five-star review and write something great about what Andrew had to say and how it impacted and changed your career. And with that, we'll catch you next time on Mortgage Lending Mastery. Thanks for listening to Mortgage Lending Mastery. Be sure to subscribe to hear more sales tips, ideas, strategies, and tactics to help you with your personal and professional growth to multiply your results in record time. And if you like what we're doing, don't forget to give us a rating and review so we can continue to bring you the best content possible. Wanting more beyond the podcast? Join our Mortgage Lending Mastery membership community where you will find extended interviews with our favorite guests weekly training, tips, and insider secrets, fireside chats with Jen, free content, meet, share, and collaborate with other members, and so much more. Click the link in the show notes to learn more about this exclusive content. Mortgage Lending Mastery is an industry syndicate charter podcast. Industry Syndicate is the first podcast network specifically for the mortgage and real estate industries. Get the Industry Syndicate app in the App Store or Google Play today.